Hi, I'm Trisha from Club Scrap, and whether you want to get organized, stay organized, or simply find a unique and creative way to store your photos and memorabilia, allow me to expand your bookmaking horizons with this really fun project. Well, let's take a look at this darling little book here. It's not really a book, it's really a file folder. It has a sweet little ribbon around the front. And then when you open it up, inside are all these pockets that you can load however you want. So if, whether you want to keep your stationery or cards in here, you can do that, or photos, anything. All right, so let's get started on our project. And the first thing we need to understand about this is that there are two accordion spines, one on each side of this book. And sometimes, I'll be honest, that is the most difficult part of making this project. When I teach it in classes, it seems we always get hung up on those accordion spines. So to help me, I brought a little helper along. It's the Score It Mini. And this one is just lightweight and portable, so I can take it with me on all my travels and this helps me make perfect accordion spines every time. All right, now I'm going to be working with a long sheet of paper and what I need is a score line every three quarters of an inch. Now first I'm going to remove the stop guide so I can work with my really long piece of paper. We're going to just simply put our corner of our paper at the three quarter of an inch mark and make our first score. Now there's a ridge here and there's a notch here so I just simply put the tool into the notch with pressure, I'll pull back. Now the amount of pressure you use depends on the thickness of your paper. This is 80 pound cover stock, so you want to make sure you put some good pressure. Then what I did here was flipped the paper for my next score line because this is an accordion fold, and then I'll pull back. Now my next score will be again three quarters of an inch away from the one I just made. So I'm going to look at the score line, bring it to 0.75 inches right there, and I'll make my next score line. And that's why it doesn't matter that my paper is longer than the board because I just continually measure right here. This is the only measurement I'm really looking at every time I make a score. And just flip the paper each time because your folds will go in the opposite direction. And again to review, this is uh, something opposite to what I originally thought to be true. The raised part or the ridge of this score line is what ends up on the inside of the fold. And I always thought it was the other way around. And turns out a lot of people thought so. So just remember that the raised part inside of the fold. All right, let's take a look at one that's been completely scored and I'll show you how fun this is. All I need to do now is my first fold goes up and then you can just continue. I love this. I love how this works. And you just can make the perfect folds lickety split. Then to make all of your score lines perfectly creased, just come back in with your bone folder and make your folds really reinforced and nice and crisp with the bone folder. And then turn it the other direction and do it the same way. Now, you'll do this a second time because remember, our book has two spines and so the job is complete when you have two spines that are the same accordion folds. Now I've been working with Club Scraps 5x7 expandable file folder project kit and these are the papers that go onto the outer cover. So what I'm gonna do is just turn them over. Now from the kit, these are the two largest pieces, and you can see that the height of these pieces is the same. And then the boards that also come with it, I've just taken a few seconds and measured and labeled each of them so that I know exactly which piece I'm working with because, let me just point out, I've got a front, a spine, a back cover and another spine and the flap, but check this out. The spine is only slightly narrower than the flap, so you really want to make sure you have the pieces in the right places. All right, now that we've done that, I want to point out that we have a seam here that meets on our back cover. Now for those of you who've seen a lot of the previous shows where I've created handmade books, you already know a lot of those bookbinding tips. If you don't, search the archives, watch those shows. You'll need to know those gluing techniques and tips for making the perfect book cover that I want to share with you. But for those of you who are experienced, I've got one more great little tip. So let's just do this one thing with getting our gluing started for our cover. What we need to do is figure out where to put our glue on our back cover. So I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to draw a guideline for my glue at one and a half inches. So I'm using a grid ruler that's three inches wide. I have this edge of the book board lined up with the one and a half inch mark on my ruler. And then I'll take a marker and just draw a straight line. That is now my glue guideline and everything else depends on that one line. Then I'll take some of Club Scraps book binding glue and simply apply the glue to the marked off area and then fan the glue to the outer edge. So what we're going to do is apply our flap to our cover 
and we want to make sure it's squared in all directions. We want to make sure that it's lined up with this line and then it's squared this way too. So I'm going to use my ruler to help me. When I calculate measurements for making books, I always like to have a three quarter inch margin on all sides. So if I line this edge up, three quarter inch mark on my ruler, and also with the straight edge that I've already drawn, I will know that I'm placing this piece exactly where it needs to go. Then when you flip this back over, you can easily see how this lines up again right where it should be. Now, in learning from the other shows how to glue, I'll just remind you that you want all of the pieces to be level with each other and you want one eighth of an inch of a gutter between each piece and that will allow hinges for your book to open and close properly. So just remember that one eighth of an inch gutter between each piece and make sure they're level. All right, so if you follow all of the techniques I've given you in the past, hopefully you'll end up with something that looks like this. Now here we have everything wrapped. You can see that eighth inch gutter in between each piece. I've added a ribbon. The location of the ribbon is simply at the point of the seam that you can see right here. So let's check those hinges, the front, then the bottom spine. Here's the back and the flap, and you can see how our book is really coming together. Next, what you'll need to do is add your inside covers. This is the top, and it corresponds with the same paper. Then we have this fun little print to go on the inside. Once those are glued into place, your book cover will be complete. And it should look like this. So here's our cover, and the next thing we need to do is prepare those divider pages for the inside of our expanding folder. And this is not very difficult. We just need to have those accordion spines that you made earlier and position them horizontally in front of you so that there's a valley fold on the inside. So right here is the inside. This will be one accordion spine and this is the other and I'm seeing a valley fold. If it's this way, your, your paper's facing the wrong way. Make sure you see a valley fold. Next, I have a five by seven um, divider page here that I will add glue. Now this paper has a linen-like texture. It's really subtle, but if you want to make it consistent, just be sure to apply the glue to the smooth or the plain side of the paper. And notice I'm removing most of the glue with my foam brush. All right, so if I take this, now I'm turning it back, so this is the linen texture side, and I'm gonna place that right into the valley of this first fold, and make sure it's level from top to bottom. And I just, because the glue coat is so thin, it dries almost instantly. And then the other edge, which has glue, will slide into this valley. Just make sure everything's level and squared. And now I have a piece of paper with wings. And that's what you should have too. Now looking at the back, this is that first flap. And that's why it's so important you get it placed properly. Okay, now the next one can be a little bit tricky, but the more divider pages you add, the easier this project becomes. Once again, I'm feeling for the smooth side. This is it. And just a thin line of glue on each end. The thickness of each fold on your accordion is three quarters of an inch. And then I'm going to place this page on the same side of the next valley fold as you did in the previous one. So it's on this, it should be quite easy to kind of see where that goes. And then we'll place it on the other valley. Now make sure it gets down into that valley nice and securely. If it's crooked in there, guess what? Your expanding files will be crooked. All right, so once you finish with, your, with this piece, you've completed your very first pocket. Now in the kit, there are nine of these pages. And so with the number of valley folds that you have and the number of pages you have, it should work out perfectly. Now as you're completing this, you want to turn it upwards and then just drop the pages in and then press them in place. So when your accordion is done, this is how it will look and you can see all the pockets in there. The very last pocket will go onto the front flap, okay, and you'll see that. You'll have no more valley folds left, but one more page left. That will go on the front and then complete your entire expanding folder. So the only thing left to do is attach this to the inside cover. So here's my cover, and the next thing I'll do is apply some glue to the back page of my accordion. All right, so I'm going to turn it over, and when I'm attaching it to this, I can kind of scoot it and turn it. Okay, so once you have that in place, we only have to bring the bottom flap up. Now, don't make the mistake I did and put glue on the entire front 
divider panel because if you do that there's a reveal and then you'll have glue in that area and once again you'll be really disappointed. See I get to make all the mistakes for you in advance of you doing the project. Then I'll apply a generous amount of glue here. You'll simply bring it up and over and you can say I'm done. I did it. I made my own handmade book. Now you want to make sure that it really fits well here and and allow it to dry before you go and play with it and load it with anything, okay? Let me show you the finished one that's completely dry. We'll just review this. We can see the seam where we started, how nice and square it is with our ribbons coming out from behind that seam. And when you open it up, there are your pages inside. And let me just show you one that's been doctored up a little bit. I used a chiffon ribbon instead of the grow grain just to kind of add some variation. But check out the little wooden feet added to the bottom. I just think it adds so much. And then right here we've got all little, just little findings. And I think all of us have stuff in our stash that we can add to really jazz something up and make it special. And then you can stash anything you want inside. Check out the variation on the divider pages here on the inside. A little notch was cut into each page and the little tab was added so you can organize this any way you want. All right, so here's our little box that needs a little love inside. And I thought, what could be more perfect than to fill this with some pictures of my recent trip to the Netherlands with Michael and Judy. Now, what you also want to know is that there are some little sizes of expandable file folders that you can get too that actually hold perfectly a two and a half by three and a half ATC card. And when my 10 year old daughter Emily saw this project, she said, oh mom, I want to make one. So she made a book report with one of her little mini sizes. The exterior of the book, of the cover, matches the cover of the book that she was reporting on called The Penderwicks. And then Emily made a little card inside for each character in the book so that when she talked to her class about the stories, she could share that right from this little folder, and I love her picture of Mrs. Tifton, the mean lady next door. And then on the back, she has the book summary written. Of course, we got an A on the project. Well, I guess if you're 10 or multiples of 10, I'm sure that you'll really enjoy this handmade project. It's a lot of fun. It's time for a Stroop Waffle. Mm -hmm. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.